Stitches and welcome to my latest project, the Upstairs Workshop. Hello Stitchers, it's Jenny of Jenny Stitches and welcome back to my channel. Now, I'm glad you've joined me today. Um, it's lovely to see you here and this is a slightly different type of video because I thought I would give you a little bit of an update on what I am working on at the moment behind the scenes, which is the renovation of the upstairs of the shop. So this is quite a big project um, and I feel like I haven't really explained to you exactly what I'm up to. So I thought I will bring you up here, we'll have a cup of tea and we'll have a little sort of chat about what's going on. So I hope the sound quality is okay. It's very echoey up here because there's not really anything in this room at the minute. Um, so just bear with me. <laughs> Um, right, so it's almost been a year since I took the lease for this shop. I signed my lease on the 31st of May last year um, and it's now the 15th of May in 2024 so I can't believe how quickly that first year has gone by. Um, I signed my lease for a five year term. Um, which is in the land of commercial leasing is actually quite a short term so it's not i'm not sort of committed for massive amounts of time and um, quite often with shop leases landlords prefer you to sign for sort of 10 years plus so i did manage to get away with five years and at the time um and still now i was really proud of the lease that i negotiated i got quite a good deal um, and initially I was just interested in the downstairs retail space that obviously you've seen a lot of. Um, it's massive compared to my old space. Um, and when I came to have a look around the building, I wondered what was upstairs, but I wasn't really aware. Um, and the landlord showed me up here and I was like, crikey, <laughs> it's massive. So essentially up here I have the same amount of space that I have downstairs but I think it's fair to say that it's basically just been neglected for years and years and years. So in terms of a little bit of history, this building was built in around the 60s and initially it's, if you look at it from the outside, it's split into three units. Um, it was built as like, a, like an independent department store. Um, local people will recognise it. It was um, Blackshaw's. Um, it had two floors and it was quite famous for sort of having bits of everything, sort of gardening stuff, hardware, toys, that kind of thing. Um, Blackshaw's were very famous. They were a family business for the big teddy bear, which now resides in the local museum. Um, and I never, I don't recall coming into Blackshaw's when this building was that. I think I'm a little bit too young for that. Um, but upstairs, uh, apparently there was a big train set and there were stairs sort of up the middle of the building. Um, now, I think in around the early 2000s, which was when I actually lived away from the area, um, the building was sold and subdivided into three units as it is today. Um, and this particular unit that I'm in now is unit one. Um, and I'm not quite sure of the timeline of events, but I do know that in the past it has been a branch of Sharp's bedrooms, um, which would explain why I've got a row of fitted wardrobes <laughs> in the office in here. Um, and it was also an American diner called Mustang Sally's, so it's a 50s style diner. Again, I don't really remember that. Um, I think that's when I was living in Preston. I'd moved away to university and I stayed there for about eight years. So I don't particularly recall what was here at that point because I didn't come home very often. Um, and the last thing that was in here, the last occupant was uh, cash converters. And they took a 10 year lease on the building which expired just before I started looking at it um, but they only actually traded for around 18 months so they were still sort of um, obliged to pay that lease to the landlord so uh, yeah it stood empty for at least 
eight years as far as I know um, until it came back into the hands of the landlord and then on to me. Um, yeah, but in all of that time with all of those occupants, I don't believe that the upper floor has ever been used for anything other than storage um, or sort of, um, you know, sort of ancillary space, staff rooms, that kind of thing. So as a result, um, this room is pretty battered and neglected. There's no, or there were no power sockets up here. Um, just in at the very rear, which I'll show you in a moment, there's a little kitchen and a little office room. They have power sockets in. There's lighting up here, um, but no power in, in the main sort of room, um, which is difficult. Um, also, there was no floor coverings up here because I think as I've touched on before, before I took it on, this building had quite a bad leak in the roof, quite bad water ingress and the carpets got ripped out at that point. So that's not great either. Um, <laughs> and there has been areas of the room which have been replastered because of the water damage and some areas that have just been left dirty and with significant sort of black mould on which is not a healthy environment at all. So, um, needless to say, with everything that I've had to sort out downstairs in the last 12 months, I haven't done anything up here up until recently. Um, I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it. Everybody seemed to be asking all the time, what are you going to do with upstairs? And I was like, I don't know, I've got downstairs to sort out yet. That's such a huge job. Um, but I did have it in the back of my mind, it would make an amazing space for content creation um, you know for sort of filming YouTube videos and um, product photography you know I was sort of picturing white walls and being able to really get nice photos of the fabric and of outfits and things um, lots and lots of potential uses have come through my mind and um, obviously it's a great space for storage of excess stock and packaging materials um, with sort of introducing kits into the picture more recently um, I think it would be great to have a more of a dedicated space up here for creating um, the purple packages I can get everything laid out and things um, and finally of course is the potential for an additional workshop space so I have the downstairs workshop at the moment which seats around six to eight people with sewing machines um, and that works really really well um, we've had quite a few workshops and socials down there and i'm really happy with how that space is working um, but obviously there's always the potential for more and up here with this large space we could fit in a lot more people we could have more ironing stations there's space for cutting out um, and also it's a more enclosed and private space so if we had a workshop running where people really need to concentrate and they don't need the distraction of people coming into the shop that can take place up here so um yeah all of those uses i i think but at the moment i'm just remaining open-minded <laughs> um classes and workshops were not not something i ever thought i would offer if i'm honest um I'm very interested in the sort of business and retail side of things um, and the e-commerce, the website side of things. Um, but I was getting asked a lot if we would offer workshops, which is why I put in the downstairs space. And why I say I will remain open-minded is because it's come as such a revelation to me how much I enjoy offering those things. Um, a huge part of being self-employed and having your own business is the reward that it brings you that's non-financial and I truly feel that we've started to create a community within the workshop space here and it's just it's just amazing it's the loveliest thing um, socials now pretty much book themselves up and um, we have a group of regular sewists that are coming 
the atmosphere on those days is just wonderful. Everybody's so happy and like-minded and the feedback from those has been great. And likewise with the taught classes, we've had people making bags, we've had beginner sewers, we've had overlocker workshops. I've had a go at teaching, which I never thought I would do. And again, it's just so rewarding to see people leave with that sense of satisfaction and pride that they've learned something, that they've really taken something away from the day. And yeah, I, I'm just, I'm surprised at, at how much I've enjoyed offering that. And I, I want to do more of that, so that's great. So I've always wanted with this entire shop, this entire building, for it to be a destination. I, I want it to be more than just somewhere you come to buy a zip or a bit of fabric. I want it to be somewhere that you come and you really enjoy the atmosphere and that's why I invest time in making it look nice, providing things like a coffee machine and plenty of space so that you can just come in and really take your time over your day. So yeah, I'm hoping that this upper floor renovation will add to that package. In a lot of ways, it feels a bit too soon. Um, classes are only really just starting to take a bit of momentum downstairs and I can't say I actually need this space right now, but the time is right to get it done. And once it's done, it's done. And I've got four more years on this lease until I have to decide what happens after that. So might as well just get on with it. <laughs> and also it's, it's making a huge difference to come up here and it not be disgusting. So, um, so I'll give you a little chat through what I've done so far um, and yeah I'll show you around. Okay so I have just popped you the camera in the doorway to up here and I'm kind of hoping that you can see what is going on but this is the main space and um, as you can see we've got two windows out onto the street over there. They don't let in a huge amount of natural light, which is a shame. Um, the room has come with plaster on the walls, which apparently, according to the owners of the other two units, I'm quite lucky to have plaster on the walls. So um, that's a good thing. Um, I've had an electrician come in and install power sockets, we've got loads of power now. So that was the biggest job because that was the part that relied on an external contractor, if you will. So that's done. And then the rest is gonna be DIY. So you can see from the floor beneath me now, um, Mr. Stitches has been busy laying laminate flooring to match the shop floor downstairs. Um, he's about halfway across the room right now. We've had to do some repairs to the floor. Um, but those are done, so hopefully this weekend he's going to make a really good dent on doing the rest. Um, and then after that, really, it's just a case of fixing up some bits and pieces in the walls and getting everything painted. I have made a start on the paintwork, and it's going to take ages. It's a massive job. <laughs> There's a lot to cover, um, and ceilings as well. So, yeah. Pray for my neck, as long as I like this. <laughs> um, we've also got uh, skirting boards which need to be installed in here. And then once we've got that done, um, we can then bring furniture in. And I'm actually expecting an IKEA delivery tomorrow. Um, and my plan is to go pretty basic. Um, I'm going to get tables to match the IKEA tables that I've got downstairs and a very sort of flexible system of lightweight movable tables which we can group together or move apart. Nothing is gonna be fixed, so the space can be completely reconfigurable. And the idea being that I would like to use it and kind of live in it for a while before I make any decisions on, um, on where things go. And that also offers the opportunity for if other people want to come in and hire the workshop space, then they're not restricted to the furniture that I've got up here for sewing classes. Um, so that's the idea at the minute and we'll just have to see how it goes. Um, I am restricted by money. Um, I could go mad up here sort of from a design perspective and really jazz it up and put some beautiful features in. Um, I seriously considered painting the ceiling black at one point just for the visual effect, <laughs> but I, I talked myself out of that one. Um, but 
I can't afford to go mad. We're just going to have to start with it very, very basic and add to it as we go. So, yeah, I'd love to open it up with a big sort of snazzy, super aesthetic look to it, but I think it's going to be quite basic. But this is the main space towards the front of the building, um, and this is probably going to be the primary workshop area just because that gets the best light. Okay, so I've just flipped you around to show the other side of the room. Um, over here we have um, the kitchen, the, the one with the daylight coming in there, that's a little kitchen room. And the darker doorway leads to a small office room, which as I mentioned, I'm using for storage and that's how that's going to stay. So that's got things like um, all of my decorations for the windows and... Um, paperwork and all the boring stuff that I need to just shove away is in there, bits and bobs. Um, things like my spare zero rolls and packing bags are all in there so that's great. So this end of the room has not been flawed yet. Um, you can see I've started some paint work um, and the idea is for this area of the space is we've got um, a second hand telly that my father-in-law kindly gave to us and I the sofa that I was sat on earlier is one of two which I picked up at the charity shop um, and that's to kind of make a little casual sort of lounge area over here um, obviously I've got two young children they quite often come through to the shop on a weekend or in the school holidays so I want to make a nice space for them where they can relax and also, if we do have events on up here, it can act as a kind of breakout area where you can go and sit and, and rest away from the main workspace. Um, that could also be a nice corner for content creation as well. Um, we've got power down this wall, and I guess this is just going to be a flexible space. At first, I had thought about segmenting off this area for more of an admin kind of space, but now I've seen it open, I think I want to leave it open. It would be great to have cutting tables down there or maybe ironing stations that are away from the main workspace. Um, there's a couple of freestanding doors in the corner there. The grey one is from downstairs. The window display area is a separate room and that's the door off there. I removed it the other day because I was like, I don't need a door on here. <laughs> it's just blocking the natural light coming into the shop, so I need to find a home for that. And the other door behind it is the fire door off the top of the stairs, which is going to have to go back on. Um, but yeah, lots to do, but I genuinely think we're through the worst up in this part. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see how this comes together. So I will quickly show you the kitchen. Okay, I'm finding it difficult to get the camera angles right in here because this room is quite small. Um, and then I always have to sense check myself when I say that because this room is about three meters by three meters and that is the same size as my market stall when I first started. And that for me, it's such a massive amount of perspective on how far things have come <laughs> that I could have fit my first business location in this kitchen that I now feel is quite small <laughs> is uh, really, yeah, whoa. <laughs> okay, so um, when I took the building on, the kitchen was probably one of the like the, the most horrible parts of it. Um, quite significant leaking had taken place and this whole wall behind me was just water damaged from top to bottom. Um, in an ideal world, if this was my house, I would get a builder in to come and replaster it and, and start anew. Um, however, this is not my building and I don't have the money to do that and neither do I want to spend the money on someone else's building. <laughs> so um, I very much had to do a DIY cover up job in here, which I did back in January. Um, and for the love of anaglypta wallpaper, I've managed to cover the worst of the damage. Um, and then this long shelf above here, um, I actually had this piece of shelving board in my loft at home, so I just had to pick up some brackets and Mr Stitches put that up for me. And that just gives me a bit of open shelving space to keep all of my bits and pieces for uh, coffee cups and pots and things like that for when we've got people in. Um, and then the tiles and the countertop and the cupboard I have just kept 
as is. I did think about ripping them all out and starting afresh and putting some cupboards up here, but again, I priced it up and even with cheap kitchen units, it's still an expensive job. Small things like sinks and taps really, really add up and it's not sort of a value added thing for me to spend money on for what is essentially not a public facing part of the building. So I've stuck with what I've got. I took the kitchen cupboard doors off and covered them in sticky back plastic. Um, it's a bit of a blue peter job, but they, they look okay. You know, if you look in the back of the cupboard, you can see the damage, but it doesn't matter from here. It's all clean, it's all tidy, and it's presentable. Um, I picked up a dishwasher off Facebook Marketplace, and that has been a game changer. Because <laughs> that's really handy. After we've had a social in on a Saturday, I can just load everything in there, press go and go home and forget about it. Whereas on the first few sessions, I was stood here for another hour washing up and things so that's great um, and there was no hot water when i moved in here either so um i have a really good friend who's a handyman and he came and fit a hot water boiler for me so that the sink now actually does have hot water and um, so i've still got quite a lot of painting to do in here it's not quite finished but it's almost there um but the key thing is that it it smells clean and it's tidy and it's usable so that's good and I managed to find some purple gingham curtains which I think just make it look a bit nicer because um, I don't think you can see it on here but the windows have bars over them it's an insurance requirement with shops that, that windows are, are barred in case somebody tries to break in so <laughs> I have to keep the bars so I think it just looks a little bit less prison like with the, with the nice curtains up Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this little tour and chat about what is going on in the upstairs space. Um, I have got so much to get on with, <laughs> but I mean, it's the 15th of May now. I'm aiming to have it complete by the end of June. Um, there's some workshops coming up in June, which I think will be lovely to hold up here. So hopefully we'll have things at a state where that can happen. Um, but I've got lots of plans. It's it's going to be an amazing space over the years and I'm really looking forward to seeing what we get up to in here. Um, the new series of the Sewing Bee starts next week and I'm thinking that Sewing Bee final night would be great up here with, um, you know, sort of projector and we could have drinks and nibbles and yeah, all that kind of thing. So lots more to look out for. Um, so bear with me, follow along and I will update you on how we get on. And one more thing I should say is even though there's going to be a workshop up here, I will be keeping the downstairs workshop space because that is accessible. Um, there is no lift to this floor, so I want to make, always want to make sure that I have an accessible space downstairs as well. So thank you so much for watching and if you haven't already, please do like and subscribe, see how I get on. Um, but thank you for joining in. And I'll see you soon. Happy sewing. Bye-bye.